Hello guys, Charles here and welcome back to my channel. It's not you, it's me. We're over. <laughs> what you just saw there was an extremely difficult to make reconstruction of uh, the separation of me with my real book. Like many of you, I've relied heavily on the real book and iReal Pro on my own jazz journey. I think that they're both really great tools at first. However, it's really important to remember that jazz is an oral tradition and we can often miss the point when we've got our head buried in a chart. We can generate some really impressive and theoretically interesting phrases, but again, they often overlook the point. We are supposed to be relaying a message and a melody, not just running through technical studies. For me, one of the most frustrating things has always been hearing the legends and the greats say that they don't think of changes as they play, they just play. This goes in direct contrast to the way that I've often played even some of the tunes I know the best, where really, when I think about it, all I was really doing is reading off a photographic memory of a chart in my head and seeing the changes as they go by. I wasn't really playing by feel or by ear, I was just hitting the changes. Another frustration which I've encountered a lot is simply forgetting a tune that I thought I had memorised or when it comes to actually playing it, just playing really badly over it and realising, oh, I don't know this tune anywhere near as well as I thought I did when I was shredding over it at home. I do feel nowadays, though, that although I will occasionally think of a specific chord I want to target for a sick lick when I'm playing a tune, I am pretty much playing entirely by feel and by ear, and that's a huge breakthrough for me as a player. So here are the 10 steps which I recommend you taking to begin to no longer memorize tunes, but internalize tunes. And hopefully you too can start to wean yourself off the real book and the charts. After all, can you imagine Miles calling four and Coltrane saying, just give me two seconds, Miles, while I get the iReal Pro app up on my phone? Step one is to choose the standard well. So it must either be a tune which you really love to keep you motivated, or a tune which you know the people you tend to play with really like and, and often play. It's one that you're gonna to need to know well. Both of those are gonna keep you motivated through these steps because learning a tune really well is hard work. And if you're not really that fussed about the tune you're learning, you're simply gonna stick with it for maybe a week or two, and then that's your exposure to that tune done. And as we discussed there, you're just gonna forget it down the road. Step two, create a playlist of your works in progress. Begin with a few vocal versions of the tune which you want to learn. Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughan, Frank Sinatra and Tony Bennett are all solid choices as they're known for singing the tune pretty true to the original without too much decoration and embellishment. I also go to these guys straight away because learning the lyrics can really be a useful aid memoir, but also it really gives you a sense of how the melody is supposed to be phrased, as of course we often take sentence structure as a basis for phrasing the melody. Step three, listen to these vocal versions wherever and whenever you can. Exposure to the melody before you attempt to try and play it on your instrument or study it in any way is so much more important than I ever gave it credit for. To give you a rough time frame, I grew up in a really musical family and I've been studying music on several different instruments for over 25 years now. And even now, it takes me sometimes two to four weeks to truly feel I've got a melody stuck in my head, in particular, the longer form through composed ballads or the really intricate and complex bebop heads. So however long it takes me, I want to get the melody in my head to the point where I can sing it with no effort whatsoever, the same way I would be able to sing a nursery rhyme. I shouldn't ever question that I'm about to get it wrong or wonder what's coming next. That's the stage you need to get the melody to. Step four, transcribe the melody from your head. Now that you've been listening to this melody for weeks and it's firmly fixed in your head, you're gonna find, first of all, which key the tune is most commonly performed in, and you're gonna to start to figure it out on your instrument. It's really important that you pull the melody from your head, you're not transcribing it from listening to the recording, and you're also not writing anything down. If during this process you realize you don't quite know the melody as well as you thought you did, you've got more listening to do. 
if you keep working the melody out successfully and then forgetting it on the instrument, coming back to it the next day, you'll be desperate to write it down. Don't. You need to forget that tune and work it out again the next day and again the next day. And you always work it out from scratch until you know it. This is proper brain training. If you're not used to doing this, it can be a huge upfront investment of time in the short run, but the essential skills and understanding learned will impact all of your future musical endeavors. So it is well worth sticking with. Step five, start listening to instrumentalists. Instrumentalists are much more likely to embellish and decorate the melody compared to the singers you've been listening to up to this point. Now that you're really confident with what the basic melody is, you'll better understand how different instrumental performers have chosen to embellish the same material. Find out which recordings are considered to be the classics or the essential versions of that tune and add them into your playlist with the vocal performances. Don't go overboard, but stick to a handful of players who you know are considered to be legends and greats and you won't go too far wrong. Begin to play your melody, which you've figured out on your instrument by now, along to these new recordings and really focus on the phrasing, the articulation and the groove in particular. Step six, bass. Again, using only your ears, begin to figure out the fundamental harmony of the tune by working out what the root is every time you hear a chord change. In jazz, the bassists are often walking all over the place with their lines and it can be really difficult to hone in on which of those notes is actually the root. We're not trying to play those walking bass lines, we're trying to find the fundamental. It can help to zoom out and try and hear all of the different players' parts and how the melody and harmony fit together to inform what that fundamental is. Step seven, harmony. Now that you have a melody note and a bass note, we can make an informed decision about the rest of the harmony. Start with triads, major, minor, diminished, and augmented. Then once you have the basic triads sketched out, start considering the sevens, major sevens, minor sevens, and diminished sevens. Aim to create a simple chord melody arrangement where the voicings keep the melody on top at all times. Try to analyze why that melody note required that chord type and you'll be far less likely to forget the changes in the future because you understand why they are the changes. You haven't just been told by an app or a book that they are the changes. Step eight, embellishments. Now that you know the melody and you know the harmony, we can begin to experiment with creating some basic vocabulary. As Peter Bernstein recommends, you should begin by simply embellishing the melody using your ears alone. If it sounds good, it's good. Don't worry about changes or theory. You know this song now, so let your ears be your guide. You're starting to train yourself to play by feel and sound rather than worrying about what the changes are with simple melodic embellishments. This is the first of all the steps so far where I would recommend you begin to jot down some of your embellishments and some of your basic ideas. You're starting to develop your own vocabulary and your own unique sound. This has been groundbreaking for me in my own practice over the last few months. And I've been revisiting standards, which I thought I could play and just seeing how much content there is that I can get out of the melody alone. Jazz improvisation is not about showboating over the chord changes using music theory that you've learned. Someone like me can be very easily accused of doing that too frequently. It's about delivering that message and that melody in the purest way possible to the audience. Another important embellishment exercise is to fill in the gaps at the end of each melodic phrase with a sensible response. You'll hear this all the time in the big band arrangements underneath the singer, where the singer ends their phrase, the pianist or a sax soloist or whoever it is, plays a little supportive lick for even just half a bar, but it responds nicely to what came before it. Create and write down a few heads of your own melodic embellishments and responses, and you'll likely have a far greater quantity of really tasteful original vocabulary than you do on any tunes which you've simply been jamming over. Step nine, shed. So we usually skip straight to this part and just simply start blowing over the changes with a backing track or a metronome. However, by now, you'll certainly understand this standard probably far beyond any of your fellow players and you can really start to blow over this tune and open up over this tune in an informed way. As Brecker recommends, start creating vocabulary for the player you would like to become. 
using some of the advanced techniques and advanced theoretical concepts that you know. Because you're now so intimate with the workings of the song, you're very likely to create interesting phrases and fragments which are informed by the song itself. Also try transcribing some of your favourite players' lines and licks that you've heard in the recordings you've been listening to and begin to make them your own. Maybe try moving them to a different part of the song and modulate them suitably. Step 10, play. Get out there and play this tune with as many players as you can. As Charlie Parker said, you've got to learn your instrument, then you practice, 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 and then when you finally get up there on the bandstand, simply forget it all and wail. So forget everything you've been working on up to this point, get up there and just play by feel and see what happens. There is no better litmus test than that. Wherever possible, record your performances of the standards you've been working on and analyze them after the fact. Give it a day or two so you can clear your mind of any grumbles that you had and come back to it and analyze it. Compare your recording to the player you would like to become. Think of the difference between what you're hearing on the recording and what you're hearing in your head and let that inform your future practice on this standard. Remember, there is no end point here. You simply listen to how you're currently playing, imagine how you would like to become, and for the rest of your life, you continue that process. I hope you found those tips helpful. These are the steps which I wish I had been consistently taking over my own jazz journey and will be from now on. By following these steps, you'll have a song learned and internalized for life. As well as that, you'll be developing your own unique original vocabulary and the most important thing is developing your ear training skills, which are essential for any musician. I would add that the real book certainly still has a place, especially when you need to jam over a tune that you haven't heard before. There's a lot of tunes in there. Uh, it's pretty unrealistic to expect someone to know all of them. It's also a great tool in lessons when we want to look at a few examples of specific targeted theories or techniques that we find in these tunes but I no longer consider it an appropriate method by which tunes and changes should be learned. So what do you think? How should the real book be effectively used in your opinion? And what methods and tips have you got for internalizing standards yourself? There's a few frequent commenters with some great advice who will no doubt comment down below. So make sure you join in down there and see what other tips people are giving. Please do give this video a like, subscribe, ding that notification bell and share with any of your friends who have been struggling with mastering their standards. And as always, I hope you're all doing very well, getting plenty of practice in, and I very much look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers. Roll up, roll up, let me embed a story you'll never forget. A drip, drip, a drowning in debt now. You can't buy your way out.